the camera bags have been lightened slightly so we're not taking all our gear down and uh, we're going to head off back down to the cliffs at Land's End and do a bit of photography from this uh, location hopefully we'll have a bit of light or hopefully we'll have the sun on our side but uh, got to be in it to win it I suppose again so uh, yeah back down at Land's End we go another mile walk there and a walk back Hopefully it'll be worth it. come down here after five o'clock guys and you'll have the place to yourself almost um, there's a few people hanging around because there is a hotel back there but apart from that there's no one here you still have to pay parking it's pay and display down there so uh, you'll still have to pay if you go in there it's got up the um, the winds got up a little bit but we're just gonna take a walk over here to see what the compositions are like for taking a photo So we're hunkering down under the rocks here, trying to keep out of the way of the, uh, the wind because it is win very windy here. Um, so we haven't got the light, but what we have got is loads of contrast and different textures within the clouds um, and some rocks down here. This uh, camera that I'm talking to you on is going to try and lift the exposure up, but it's quite dark here, it's quite moody and dark. So hopefully we'll get a picture. We just need a couple of the big boats to go past because they're spoiling it at the moment. So we could be here for a while, guys. <laughs> and what we'll do is, I know this isn't a photography channel, but just quickly help you, any guys, any of you out there that are taking pictures, we're gonna use the rule of thirds here. So we've got a picture, we've got composition, and we're gonna bring the landscape down so the sky only takes up a third of the image. That's what we're gonna try and achieve here and then a bit of foreground with the rocks around us and uh, the ones at sea to help lead you in to the old lighthouse in the background. So if you're gonna take a picture, if you've got a subject, try and make sure they either line up on the third of the screen, which I'll demonstrate now with the picture from here. Same with an object all on its own, try and get it into a third of your actual uh, picture, either horizontally or vertically.
time to get back, folks. So it's dark, we need to get off these cliffs while we can still see where we're going. And then, uh, yeah, there you go, Land's End. Well, the light's gone, it's a bit windy. <laughs> it's time for a cup of tea. That's enough for now. Good morning from a blustery Cornwall coast. Land's End, the stone's far away. Let's see if I can get out of the wind a little bit here. So uh, again, a real pleasant night's sleep, real quiet campsite this. Um, this campsite guys, check it out. It's a walk into Land's End, so real convenient for that. And only a half mile walk, only a half mile walk to Senan, which is a lovely, lovely little village there. Uh, with a pub and a shop and everything like that. So if you want to hunker down for a couple of days or a week in Cornwall, give this one a go. And then you can always ping out backwards and forwards to this place. But yeah, really good. So, let's hit, let's hit the road on this windy, windy morning. You're still my favorite queen of the night, a friend that's right. dressed up because we're going to the theatre no ordinary theatre it's outside theatre it's very cold and it's very windy today <laughs> dressed up like we're going on an expedition <laughs> to the arctic <laughs> yep it's very windy out there so let's go and have a look at this theatre We're at Minak Theatre. Um, the beach and the bay over the other side are just simply incredible. Well, absolutely magnificent. And then uh, down the bottom here, that's where the actual theatre part is, which we'll go and take a look at. And there's a cafe, and I've not had any dinner, and I'm hangry. <laughs> I should imagine on a nice warm day this would be quite uh, spectacular here. Yeah? Still, still cool now, but um, on a hot day it would be really cool. Four miles from Land's End is the world famous Minak Theatre. It is perched on the rugged cliffs overlooking the sea beyond. So there's a little um, cafe here, but it's it's not the best to be fair, so make sure you've uh, eaten before you come here. You get a cup of tea and a cup of coffee and a slice of cake. That's about it, really. Over 200 live performances are staged each year, in rain or sun, and nearly a quarter of a million people visit the theatre. The theatre is the brainchild of creator Rowena Cade. 
born in 1893 and brought up in a genteel Edwardian family, she was inspired to transform a Cornish cliff face into an open-air theatre. If we had visited the area in 1931, we would be clinging to a sloping cliff with a 90-foot drop below us. After the First World War and the death of her father, she moved from Cheltenham to Cornwall and bought the Minac, meaning Rocky Place, headland for £100. It was here she built her home. After being involved with an open-air production of Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night Dream, she offered them the use of her cliff garden for their next performance. To provide a suitable stage and seating area, Rowena and her helpers worked largely with hand tools and the occasional stick of dynamite. Being an artist as well as a builder, she etched beautiful designs into the stonework, which can be seen whilst walking amongst the stone seats. Rowena continued to work on the theatre well into her 80s. So if you want to come to the Minac Theatre, it's £8 per adult um, and it's a run by a charitable trust. So it's, um, it's not National Trust or um, British Heritage, English Heritage, anything like that. It is a charitable trust. Which means parking-wise, free oh, parking. It was free parking. <laughs> <laughs> so this was built by hand and a few sticks of dynamite and it seats 790 people. It's really impressive, very pretty. All the sand was bought from the beach up here by the lady that owned it previously. And uh, she just hand mixed it with the cement and then made all this. Quite incredible, eh? And the sun's out. That's a pretty, uh, pretty incredible place. Well worth a visit and reasonably priced to be fair. So Cathy's not the best. But, um, what an incredible sight when you get up to the top of here and what a feat to put this together. Okay. Incredible. Well worth a look. If you're, that, if you're at that campsite just down the road, it's only about four miles down the road. So a lovely day out that would be. I think next stop, Penzance. You're still my favorite queen of the night, a friend that's right. We was just saying about Cornwall and what we think of it. It's absolutely gorgeous place, but it's not really suited, in my, our opinion, for van life. No, not for the sort of van life, bother. Wild. Wild. 
breaks away that we do. More of a holiday destination. So it's much more of a come and get a B&B or rent a cottage for the week. Yeah. Caravan winds here folks, caravan winds. Situated at the top end of the town in Penzance, if you want, or if you are cold, or if you need a woolly jumper, this is the place to be. Claire's already uh, bug into her purse, but look at the uh, collection in here, and there's a story behind it all. So if you're in Penzance, be sure to come up to the top of the hill, look for the woolen jumper shop, and pop in. So inside the shop is a poet, and be sure again to check out his work. He's got a folder here and his artwork. And uh, if you if you if you're special like we are, then maybe he'll read one out to you. <laughs> this is what I do. It's called cats and cockroaches, done in a John Cooper Clarke style. Cats and cockroaches, flies and fleas. It's the holiday of a lifetime, and I've come from Leeds. Broken glass that makes a beach where your feet will start to bleed. It's the holiday of a lifetime, and I've come from Leeds. The inclusive food is like prison swill. The chef. He should be freed. It's the holiday of a lifetime, and I've come from Leeds. The trip around the mountain pass where my ass ate my pants with greed. It's the holiday of a lifetime, and I've come from Leeds. I went into the swimming pool, nearly drowned in all the weeds. It's the holiday of a lifetime, and I've come from Leeds. I told him I was vegetarian, and all I got was cheese. It's the holiday of a lifetime. I'm looking forward to Leeds. <laughs> Brilliant, bravo. Well done. Merci beaucoup. Yeah, so be sure to check that out. Get a jumper, a woolly hat, woolen gloves, Nordic jumpers, and a smile and a poem. Incredible place. I've got goodies. You need a high throne where you can be adored. You'll get what you deserve. This town is no fun, your life has just begun, we need to live and learn, you know the time has come. So what's Penzance famous for? Pirates! <laughs> One-eyed people evidently. <laughs> Spamming yourself in the forehead. You're still my favorite queen of the night. It's a very much more uh, a working village than a tourist village, I'd say Penzance, wouldn't you? It's a town. It's a town, yes. yeah. Yeah, okay, town. Still worth a little look around, it's still interesting. Yeah. And just over there, over there is St Michael's Mount. Yes. The opposite to Mont Saint Michel in France. So we'll probably go and have a look at that on our way round, but it doesn't give us much space. It doesn't give us uh, much space between here and there to find the park up. It's quite a busy area. We do see a church hidden away in the background. Maybe we'll try that. Yeah, there may be another one somewhere on the way. That was all right, just had a quick walk around Penzance. Um, it's not a pretty town like um, Mevergissi or St Ives or something like that, but it's still uh, it's still nice. And that was great walking into that, that shop, the woolen jumper shop. Yes, uh, it was. <laughs> it was, because Claire bought two new I woolen jumpers. <laughs> she went shopping, yeah. But um, yeah, time now to hit the road and try and find a park up in this area somewhere. And it's going to be difficult because it's quite built up. So let's see how we get on. We are in this car park at the moment. I've paid till nine o'clock in the morning and there's no sign saying no overnight parking. But, uh, <laughs> it's a car park. Thank you. 